Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to bring you another wrap up. I'm talking about horror and thrillers, including some of my most anticipated reads of the whole year. I am finally getting into them because so many books that I'm really excited about by so many of my favorite authors are coming out this fall. And well, now is the time to read and review them and I'll let you know which ones just lived up to my expectations and which ones possibly fell flat. All that being said, let's get started. First, let's talk about possibly the book I was most excited to receive this whole entire year, and that is We Spread by Ian Reid, which I received for review from Simon & Schuster Canada, so thank you so much. If you don't know, Ian Reid is one of my all-time favorite authors, and so I'm very excited to check out his latest book. This one, the very basic synopsis, follows a person who has been in a relationship with an artist, and then they pass away, and so in their aging years, they go off to live in a long-term term home, so a senior's home, and from there things begin to get strange in the way that they typically do with Ian Reid's books. Now I went into this one with high expectations, but I definitely tried to keep it in check because I know that not every book by my favorite author is necessarily going to be a favorite. And so here's what I gotta say, that in terms of the writing, this is absolutely beautiful. I think that Ian Reid is an amazing writer, and so the prose were once again very literary in style, and I did very much like that aspect of the book. It did as well have those unsettling feelings. I really didn't know what was going on. I knew very little about the book when I went into it, and I do think that's the best way to experience all of Ian Reid's books. And so it was just very, mysterious and I wasn't sure where it was going but in terms of the story once it actually got going and I got to see where it was leading I liked it but I didn't love it so what I appreciate is the themes around this book there's a lot of interesting conversations around aging and how we treat our elders in our community so I think it's very topical and works very well having read some of Ian Reid's actual nonfiction where he does memoirs talking about his parents and grandparents so I can definitely see pieces of that in in this fictional book and so I like those aspects to it. It was good but it just to me wasn't as good as this other ones. I definitely prefer I'm Thinking of Ending Things and Faux which I think are just stronger pieces, more terrifying and this one was just perhaps a little bit too ambiguous and I like ambiguity in my books. It's something I'll talk about more in this video but to me this book felt like the author didn't entirely know what was going on either, and it just felt a little bit muddled in places. And so again, liked it. A bad book by Ian Reid is still a good book, but was it the five-star read I was hoping for? Unfortunately, no. Next up, we have Ghost Eaters by Clay McLeod Chapman. This is a book that I received for review from Quark Books, and this is a book I was excited to check out because I've read the author's previous book, which was more of a horror thriller about the satanic panic. And what I always say about that book is that I wanted more Satan and less of the panic. And I was excited for this one because it was supposed to be more of a straight up horror book with supernatural elements. And that is the case. The basic synopsis is that we follow a young woman who gets involved with her ex-boyfriend. He needs help and so she reaches out. However, he ends up overdosing. And then she is left with the grief of losing this previous loved one. And so she gets the opportunity to take this drug which allows her to connect with the dead and the story goes from there. I thought it was a really great premise. Some of my favorite horror books involve grief and the lengths that we will go to for our loved ones when we are in that state of grief and so I thought the setup was fantastic but the actual book for me unfortunately didn't deliver. I really don't know what the author was intending for this book in terms of messaging and themes beyond that because this book just felt a bit surface level and I just never really fully connected with the characters or the plot and so just did not fully love this one. I am happy that it was more of a horror book but it was still very underwhelming and I do prefer Whisper Down the Lane which was a bit more to my taste and I thought had just stronger characters that I was a little bit more invested in even if there wasn't as much satanic action as I would have liked. Next up, we have Full Immersion by Gemma Amore. This is a book that I received for review from Anchor Robot Books. And this is a piece of science fiction horror, which is, I know, something that all of us are seeking online and is tough to find. So when I do find a book classified that way, I'm very excited, but also very nervous because it's a genre that for whatever reason just seems hard to land and actually 
make the book as good as the premise makes it out to be. So with this particular book, we follow a woman who is dealing with postpartum and grief and suicidal thoughts. And so she is put into this virtual environment in order to do a form of therapy in this future where this is a new trial experiment. And so within the story, we follow her as she is trying to process all of these dark emotions. And then of course the story goes from there. This is a premise that I really enjoy. I do love the setup, which reminded me a lot of that Jim Carrey movie, which I always butcher the name of, but that is Sunshine of the Eternal Spotless Sun. I'm getting that wrong. Someone correct me in the comments. I do not have time to refilm this, but it reminded me a lot of that movie because it has a similar idea where you have a character that is in some kind of subconscious state. And then within this book, you actually have people who are watching them from the outside. And that is perhaps my only criticism of this book is that it started out very mysterious and suspenseful and very abstract and you really didn't know what was happening but the book became a little bit more concrete once we got that outside perspective so we got to see those that are watching over this woman as she is in the therapy so we get to see what is happening with her body and getting a lot more explanation and I again I like my books really ambiguous so I actually would have preferred if it had been stripped away and we didn't really know what was reality and what was in the person's mind and so I wish there had been less of the outside perspective because the beginning of the book actually had Ian Reid vibes for me. It really reminded me of that. But that suspense and eeriness kind of went away a little bit towards the later part of the book once we again knew more of what was happening and a lot was being explained to us as the reader. That being said, I ended up still really enjoying this book and easily for me the best aspect was the depiction of postpartum depression and suicidal thoughts and all of these dark emotions that the character is going through. And that is probably because of the fact that this author is very open that they struggled a lot with these own emotions themselves and really wrote it into a fictional story. So no, this is not nonfiction, but it's definitely inspired by real events. And for me, this has been the year of the 2022 releases where fiction is mirroring reality. And I think it works incredibly well because this book was just so powerful, so raw. It was just unflinching. And you know me, I really love dark depictions of motherhood and the fact that it's not always a rosy, perfect experience. And so getting to see an author just lay all of their uncomfortable feelings on the page was just incredible. So that part of the book was five stars for me. I loved it. It was definitely one of the most memorable reads. In terms of the science fiction elements, based off the synopsis, you can kind of guess some of the places it might go. It did lean into some tropes that I've seen before and were a bit predictable, but they're also tropes that I really like, so I can't complain. I thought they were really fun. I thought the ending was well done. It was creepy and bizarre, and it really fit the book. So needless to say, I really enjoyed this one. I do recommend it. This is a piece of sci-fi horror that actually works. Thank goodness. Next up, we have Always the First to Die by R.J. Jacobs. And this is a book that I received for review from Sourcebooks. And this follows a woman who is an actress who was involved in a movie and now is kind of returning back to that once again because they're revisiting the movie site. The director is once again filming and they get pulled back into this old world that they have left behind. This director is really interesting because why he is so well known in the horror scene is the fact that he goes goes out of his way to truly scare the actors and terrify them in real life in order to get these very real reactions on camera. And so it's very bizarre. He's a little bit like meta and just, you know, kind of goes too far. And so that's a lot of the book is this conversation of the line between horror in real life versus on the film. And I thought that it was really fun in that aspect. That being said, I thought I was going to describe this book to all of you as like a love letter to horror fans. But the further I went into this book and especially the way that it concluded, which I won't spoil, but some of the writing and the themes and discussions that I felt like the author was trying to make weren't the kind of discussions I would expect to see brought up by a true horror fan. It felt like someone who wanted to write a thriller that would be interesting to horror fans, but I think that horror readers might be a little bit disappointed with some of the conclusions that the characters and perhaps the author kind of come to by the end of this book. So it's hard to describe and I ha can't really talk about it in detail without spoiling anything, but it's just some strange choices that I wouldn't have made and I just feel like this author perhaps doesn't truly love horror and just likes the idea of horror more than the actual genre and perhaps isn't like a true fan who has kind of loved it since their youth, but maybe I'm reading too much into it. 
all that being said, I did think it was fun. It was easy to fly through. There was a little bit more relationship talk than I would have liked, but again, if you are a horror fan that's looking for a thriller on those topics, this is an interesting one to check out, and perhaps you will find it to be to your taste. Now I want to switch over to True Crime and talk about Murder in the Neighborhood by Ellen J. Green. And this is a book that recounts the first recorded case of a mass shooting in the U.S. And so this book might be difficult for some people to read. And of course, if it's too difficult to even hear about this book, feel free to skip to the next. But this was a very interesting book because it covered a case I was not familiar with. And the story is told over a few different perspectives. So we get to have a background on the perpetrator themselves and really kind of what led up to this incident or some of the mental issues and challenges that might have kind of led them to that point. But then we also get the perspective of a young man who at the time was a boy and he was a survivor of that incident. And then we get to have him as an adult reflecting back on what happened. And what I love so much about this book was the way that it was written. I imagine they took some great liberties in the way that they wrote this book because it, I assume that they had to reconstruct a lot of dialogue. But what it did is make for a really compelling narrative story that reads a lot more like fiction. In fact, this read like a coming of age story, particularly the ones where there is a loss of innocence. So we follow this young man who was there during the shootings and got to see how it affected his town, his family, and again, the perpetrator and everything that came afterwards. So if you're someone who often struggles with nonfiction because you find it to be very dry and hard to follow, this is definitely one that you may want to check out. Again, if you can stand the particular content warnings in this one, but I thought that it was a really compelling story that was told in a really nuanced way. And I think if, again, if you can deal with everything that is in this book, I think that it has some really good commentary on what is happening in modern America and might be a really good way to reflect on current events. And finally, I want to talk about the United States of Cryptides, all by J.W. Ocker. And this is a nonfiction book that, just like the title suggests, involves an encyclopedia of all these different supposed supernatural creatures that exist all throughout the United States. If you recognize the author name, that's because I've gushed about his fiction before. So I've read his adult fiction and his middle grade and really love it. And this is actually my first opportunity to read his nonfiction. So I'm excited to finally get into it. And so this first off is a really nice book. If you're ever looking for a gift, I have to give compliments to Cork Books and how this is actually bound because it's got really nice finish. And and like really nice pictures. It's all done in color and got some like creepy imagery in here. I don't want to give away too much, but I really enjoyed this one. I don't review a lot of nonfiction horror on the channel because of the fact I've said before that I am a skeptic. I don't really believe in any of this. And so I normally steer clear of it, but J.W. Ocker for me does it right because he writes from a perspective that works for a skeptic like me, where it's more tongue in cheek. It's more about, I think, the history and lore surrounding these creatures, whether or not they exist is perhaps secondary. And I think that his books can appeal to those that perhaps believe in things and then also still work for me and other readers that are just, you know, not so much believers, let's say. So I really enjoyed this one. I think that he writes with a lot of good humor and really includes some interesting facts. And again, it's the kind of book that like, I would like to just leave on my coffee table and have guests like flip through it as they're, you know, drinking coffee and kind of hanging out in the living room. Of course, my coffee table books might be different than yours. I'd love to know what's on your coffee table if it's also something creepy. But yeah, I thought this book was just very well done and it's kind of hard to summarize as a <laughs> complete novel because again, it's nonfiction. It's more the kind of book where you kind of want to dabble through. So I kind of was chipping away at it since I got a review copy and I'm kind of being slowly going through it. But again, I do think it's a lot of fun and I definitely would love to read more of J.W. Ocker's nonfiction. So highly recommend if this is up your alley. All right, we've made it to the end of the video here. I'd love to know of the books I talked about, which ones are you planning on checking out? And tell me down below in the comments, what is a book that you were really anticipating this year and did it live up to your hype or did it let you down? I have had both experiences this year and it's just the nature of reading and reviewing books. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I do read a lot of horror thrillers, true crime, fantasy, and science fiction. And if you wanna help me out, you can give this video a thumbs up, share it around online, drop a comment, even if it's just a little emoji like a Sasquatch or some other kind of creature like that. And if you want to hit that little notification bell, you'll never miss a video from me. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.